Uh, okay, uh, let's get uh, today's seminar. Today's seminar speaker is Professor Pascal Duta, and he will talk about muon and electron GMS2 photo anomaly and minibun. So please start. Thank you. Thank you very much for this invitation. And I hope all of you are doing okay during this difficult time. And uh, personally, I'm looking forward to the day when uh, we'll be able to interact again uh, in three space dimension. Uh, anyway, for today, my topic, uh, uh, as mentioned by John Cook, is uh, muon electron G minus two, Koto anomaly and mini boon in the context of the extended Higgs sector. So it's uh, too long of a title, so that's why I cut it short. But uh, in the in the talk, I will talk about uh, this extended Higgs sector and the possible possible solution to all these uh, anomalies. So, and this talk uh, would be based on this paper uh, written in collaboration with uh, uh, Professor Tian Jun Li and uh, my graduate student uh, Sumit Kosh. Okay, so what I will do uh, first. Uh, um, I will uh, discuss various anomalies uh, and uh, various anomalies in the ex experimental results and some of them are uh, long standing and uh, some of them are recent and I will introduce a, a, a model and new interactions uh, to uh, address these uh, anomalies and uh, I will show you the effectiveness of this model to address the uh, anomalies and various puzzles and uh, in, you know through some results and then uh, i'll dis also discuss the possibilities of uh, probing this model and uh, i've been concluded so uh, uh, various uh, puzzles and anomalies in uh, particle physics uh, today so one of the major puzzles of course uh, you know, uh, speaking to the queer, is the dark matter content of the universe. And the question is, uh, uh, what particle is the dark matter candidate and uh, where is the model? And uh, we know standard model cannot uh, explain the measured dark matter content. And uh, another puzzle is the origin of the observed neutrino masses and mixing. And in order to explain these observations, uh, we need to uh, extend the standard model neutrino sector. And uh, so it seems that both neutrino and dark matter need beyond the standard model physics. And uh, we also know that the light neutrinos can be uh, hot dark matter candidates and the dark matter content emerging from their ab abundance is minuscule. So uh, one then wonder whether the extended neutrino sector, which you need any way to explain the masses and mixing uh, can be responsible responsible for total dark matter content also we have this uh, g minus 2 anomalies uh, and uh, where muon anomaly has been with us for almost 20 years and now the electron anomaly has uh, has been added to the list and uh, we also have a recent observation of a few anomalous events from uh, koto Koto experiment at JPORT, well above the standard model prediction during last year. And uh, then we have this uh, mini boon low energy electron like event e e excess, which seems to be growing over last few years. I will try to address uh, all these uh, anomalies and these uh, puzzles uh, in, this, uh, in this talk. So, uh, 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 let me first introduce these anomalies uh, because with some details, uh, because I just uh, gave you one liner uh, kind of uh, description of the anomalies, but now let me get into a little bit of uh, detail since I would use uh, this uh, extended Higgs sector model to uh, address the address these anomalies uh, and where these uh, details, uh, some of these details would matter. So uh, G minus two muon anomaly, of course, as I said, this is a long standing one, a BNL uh, E821 measured it. And, uh, uh, and uh, Fermilab is currently measuring it. 
and future J Park would also measure it. And the accurate uh, measurement, actually, you can see like a uh, where, uh, where 540 uh, parts per billion is uh, is coupled with uh, it, it, it coupled with the precise standard model calculation actually led to the realization of this anomaly. And the deviation at this point stands at 3.7 sigma. And uh, you know, theoretical uncertainties uh, are there. And, the, uh, uh, and this uh, theoretical uncertainty is dominated by the hedronic uncertainty, uh, which is associated with this uh, uh, vacuum polarization diagram and uh, light by light uh, 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 scattering. And this is the, these are just uh, two examples. But uh, recent developments uh, actually is showing this uh, 3.7 sigma. So some of these uncertainties are getting under uh, better control of late. So many new physics explanations of this, anomalies are, of this anomaly are available in the literature since uh, 2002. And uh, so now we are waiting for the new result. And as I said, Fermilab is now uh, uh, now uh, measuring it. And you can see the target sensitivity is about uh, 140 parts per billion, and uh, which would be lower than the theoretical uncertainty, uh, 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 which is uh, about uh, 340 parts uh, per billion or something. So, uh, so, yeah, I, so the, really, uh, the future looks uh, quite good, like upcoming future, because uh, we would see uh, some uh, maybe with uh, the, this ex uh, this excess uh, continues, and uh, it would be a great thing for the new uh, new physics model. Then the G minus two uh, anomaly uh, of electron anomaly, and uh, this is uh, something uh, uh, something new, uh, like a, uh, last year, uh, in last couple of years, uh, two thousand eighteen. And uh, you can see that uh, there is a 2.4 sigma uh, discrepancy. And this appears uh, 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 due to an accurate measurement uh, of uh, the fine structure constant alpha. And the, but the deviation of this uh, uh, del uh, uh, AE or this, uh, this uh, an uh, anomaly deviation is, uh, uh, is uh, 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 kind of in opposite direction to the mu anomaly, uh, um, a mu on G minus two anomaly. And you can see that delta a, a mu over delta AE, that ratio is also not proportional to the M mu square over M e square. So these things, like uh, since the de these deviations are in the opposite directions and the ratio is not M mu square over M e square, gave some model building challenges. And it seems, uh, possibly uh, some new models with flavor violation would be uh, easy to accommodate, accommodate this anomaly. And uh, then comes the uh, uh, Koto anomaly. So uh, it's a uh, J Park based uh, experiment. And uh, here uh, the measurement is KL to pi zero nu nu bar and uh, proton hits the target and produce this uh, uh, pi zero plus a new new bar and pi zero goes to two gamma. And the four events are observed in this, uh, in this signal box. And the experimental sensitivity is about few times 10 to the power minus 11. And uh, uh, the standard model is uh, about 10 to the power minus, uh, uh, few times 10 to the power minus 10 is the sen uh, experimental sensitivity. And the standard model uh, uh, value for KL to pi zero new new branching ratio is 10 to the power minus 11. And so you can see that uh, if these are uh, uh, beyond the all possible backgrounds, then it would show some new physics. And the upgraded detector uh, would reach at a sensitivity up to 10 to a minus 11. Now the collaboration is in the process of understanding various background contamination, K plus minus flux and all this stuff. 
and to, uh, 2019 data analysis is ongoing. So again, we are waiting for some excitement from this experiment. Then comes the mini boon anomaly. And again, it's been going on uh, since uh, 2012 or so. In the beginning, it was 3.5. Now it's about 4.8 sigma. And uh, this uh, mini boon experiment is a 8 GeV proton beam. It's a beryllium target. And the experiment is supposed to check this LSND 3.8 sigma excess. And uh, this, uh, uh, at mini boon, there is a large low energy excess. And this low energy excess uh, is in the electron-like event, and it appears for both neutrino and antineutrino. And uh, this is the uh, latest result, uh, like a, a number of events, 638 plus minus 132.8. And uh, now, if you have this excess, then uh, it's uh, difficult uh, to fit this using uh, three plus. Uh, in sterile neutrinos. So you can see that uh, the, uh, the oscillation fit is here, uh, but the excess uh, goes above that. So there is a, so if you use this result to explain the uh, sterile, uh, sterile neutrino of, uh, as claimed by LSND, then there is a little bit of tension. And uh, so uh, it seems that, that if you want, if this uh, low energy uh, excess continues and which is not in the oscillation region, and then uh, it would uh, mean there could be some new physics which, uh, uh, which would be needed to uh, explain this excess. So we we'll try to connect all these anomalies and then uh, of course, one can uh, try to think about different kinds of models. But here, our idea is uh, maybe we can introduce a new scalar or new scale or new scale of a particle, uh, uh, you know, to address all these anomalies. And but also you can see that uh, the, these anomalies are tricky because uh, K two pi so flavor violation is needed. G minus two of the electron flavor violation is needed. G uh, G minus two of the muon does not need. And mini boon, uh, who knows how how it can be addressed? So some excess in the electron like events. So that means a, co a combination of maybe flavor violation, flavor conservation, but. Uh, maybe all these anomalies uh, at the end, along with this dark matter puzzle neutrino masses, uh, can be accommodated uh, if we do something to the Higgs sector. And uh, so the standard model Higgs sector still uh, can be extended. And, uh, uh, and uh, for example, we just uh, use uh, uh, one Higgs doublet in the standard mod model, but uh, in many beyond the standard model uh, ideas, grand unification models, left-right symmetric models, and many, many other models, you have much more extended Higgs sector. So what we do uh, in, this, uh, in this talk, uh, I'll uh, uh, use uh, two doublet and a, and a single just extend this uh, Higgs sector by this. So once you add this to uh, all the, this uh, new uh, doublet and a singlet, then right away you can uh, imagine the Higgs potential would become uh, mighty complicated and it has become such. So this is the uh, most general Higgs potential you can write. And then uh, uh, what we do, we uh, uh, choose the Higgs basis from the minimization condition, and the Higgs basis is uh, uh, like a uh, uh, one Higgs doublet get, gets a vacuum expectation value, and the other Higgs is uh, other Higgs doublet and the singlet they don't get the vacuum expectation value, and the condition uh, needs to be uh, satisfied is given here, and uh, so th this con uh, the, this uh, make sure that the uh, uh, singlet or the second Higgs doublet uh, do not uh, get the wave, and we can use this uh, Higgs basis uh, effectively. So but now, the, once you extended the Higgs sector, that means, of course, the physical Higgs masses also would be 
uh, would be uh, well, there, there will be more physical Higgses. So, for example, uh, this neutral scalar sector is extended. Uh, previously, you had one. Now you have uh, two, uh, two additional one. One heavy Higgs. The other one would be the light one. And uh, uh, similarly, uh, heavy Higgs like, uh, means you need to diagonalize this matrix using this. Uh, 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 this diagonalizing matrix, uh, and uh, then uh, you get uh, eigenvalues, and then those eigenvalues would be one, uh, one heavy Higgs, the other one would be our, uh, our uh, standard model Higgs, and the third one would be a light one. And the charge scalar, of course, uh, we have, uh, uh, now we have uh, additional Higgs doublets, so charge scalar would show up. Uh, um, and uh, similarly, we have this uh, CP odd neutral scalars uh, and uh, two by two matrix. And uh, so two new physical states would show. So now all these uh, uh, things uh, like a kind of, uh, I'm giving you some abstract picture. But now if I just put some numbers and uh, keep these all these uh, couplings to be between point one, point zero 0.01 to point 0.1, like a 1% uh, to 10% level. And then uh, naturally we get, uh, we can produce some interesting Higgs spectrum and which can uh, give me some uh, some uh, interesting phenomenology. So, and uh, uh, these are some benchmark values I used just for one example. There could be many more uh, benchmark values close by and then, uh, and uh, you know, depending on what you need. But uh, what, what our plan is, uh, uh, we would try to uh, address all these anomalies by one, a scalar, as we said, or one light scalar. And uh, that light scalar mass uh, would be around uh, 100 to around 100 MeV or so. Be, and you'd see why. And But anyway, at this point, I just give you this clue that we would need a lighter scalar. And that light scalar we are generating from this Higgs sector. And you, as I said, like there are three uh, light Higgses uh, and one heavy Higgs. We keep the heavy Higgs to be 500 GV to, to avoid the LHC constraint. And this is your standard model Higgs. And then this 150 MeV would be your, uh, would be your light scalar, which would be uh, used to um, uh, explain all the anomalies. And the charged Higgs, again, 500 GV we chose to avoid the uh, LHC constraint, these are 500, 400, just again to beat the LHC constraint. So these uh, values could be even larger, but uh, we are not getting into that. But just at this point, we are uh, making them la large enough. And the possible final states, so you can see that uh, 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 we have to be concerned about this uh, standard model Higgs. Uh, uh, decaying to this uh, uh, H1, H1, or the lightest Higgs, and lightest Higgs can decay into, we'll see that, the electron-positron pair, and then some invisible particles. And uh, these invisible particles, uh, uh, you know, like uh, they, they would come from your, uh, uh, you know, uh, extended neutrino sector. But at this point, just I'm giving you, like, wh what's going to come, but uh, we have to be... Uh, careful that Higgs to missing energy should not be too much, but uh, based on these parameter choices, uh, uh, you know, we, uh, we always find that uh, Higgs to invisible to be about 1% or less. Experimentally still 20% is okay. And then this uh, light Higgs or, uh, or the light scalar, I will call, call it light scalar. And this light scalar would decay to uh, electron positron 150 or, you know, between uh, 100 uh, MeV, uh, between, let's uh, take it between 50 to 150 MeV. And then uh, it would decay into uh, a pair of, elect it can decay into a pair of electron positron or this, again, this uh, light, uh, or uh, missing particles in one. So again, the branching ratio is 95% and 
So we have to be careful about these branching ratios. So right from the beginning, just I'm giving you some examples of branching ratios so that uh, you know that uh, we are mindful about these things. So now let's say, uh, so that's the Higgs sector. So successfully we break the symmetry and get the spectra and then we get a light scalar. And so far I just mentioned that light scalar could be in, in important to uh, solve all our uh, have all, all the anomalies. But uh, now the question is, uh, what happened to the uh, Yukawa sector? Now, Yukawa sector, since you say... Uh, yeah, go ahead, please. Uh, excuse me, may I have a question now? Do you, do you sure, 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 sure. Uh, before you move to the neutrino sector, back to yeah. the later one. In the slide uh, 12, can you show the slide 12? Sure. Uh, no, uh, eleven. No, uh, ten. I think uh, on the potential. On the potential. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yes, the lambda three. Okay, uh, it's a usual. Uh, my question is: Does the the singlet acquires a web? No. No. Uh, we, uh, that's why we could use this. Uh, 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 we prevent it. M one s equals to zero. And uh, uh, there is any would I mean there would be any residual symmetry related with this? Yeah, yeah, you can uh, actually. That's the thing. I I did not uh, keep that uh, symmetry basket uh, open, but you can uh, uh, use a symmetry to prevent the m one s to zero because it's a phi one dagger phi one s piece, and so you all you do is just have a, a phi s to have a symmetry, and then. Uh huh. In the so people have used this, uh, played this game uh, in different contexts. Okay. So uh, just uh, uh, so uh, you know, uh, like phi s does not have a wave, phi two does not have a wave, and then uh, all we do is uh, just use this uh, Higgs basis. To okay. In the you uh, in the uh, slide uh, 14, I guess, when you show your benchmark points for the masses of the neutral scales. Yeah, there. This one, uh, or the next one. Which one? Yeah, the, the next, yeah, this one, yeah. yeah. Right, 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 right. So uh, when you choose like, uh, I would say that this uh, neutral scalars, they're, the mass parameters are correlated by the parameters in the potential, right? That's right, that's so, right. Uh, because uh, let me be precise, uh, precisely, like it's a good question. So you can see that uh, uh, that's why I kept this uh, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, very good question. So you can see that. So that's why I kept this uh, neutral scalar mass matrix. So, you know, these are all correlated. So we, uh, so uh, what we did, we use this minimization condition and then come to this uh, three by three matrix and then choose some values and then uh, the, uh, then we get those uh, the, these numbers. But in that process, uh, just I, I thought that uh, what could be interesting to see that uh, none of these values here look weird. Like weird means uh, not one is very large, the other one is very small. So every everything is uh, kind of of the same order. And uh, then, uh, of course, minimization condition requires some of them to be negative. So those we put to be negative. And then also the Yukawa couplings, which you, Yukawa, uh, so, uh, uh, all these uh, Higgs sector couplings, uh, you know, they, they, they are, you know, are not too small, not too large. You know, they are all between 10% to 1% uh, to 10%, something like that. So not uh, extreme fine tuning you need to do this because after all you are not generating a too much of a hierarchy in the scale like a, you have gone uh, 125 gev to a uh, gev so you know so that order you can expect okay thank you thank you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. excuse me i have a quick question about sure. Um, the two, well, number one, two S, it seems irrelevant for neither. Yeah. Either. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah sure, right. But why, <laughs> what, what, is there any reason to include that, that 
Is this in, in, okay. it is higher? So, uh, so no, no, just, uh, you know, uh, it's true that, uh, see, everywhere, the, let me uh, just go back to that uh, uh, question and comment. Uh, did I put the pseudoscalar charge Higgs? Yeah. So you can see that uh, nowhere I have those things, but uh, just I put those things, uh, uh, you know, like of the order of uh, 0 0.01, 0 0.1, you know, is. Uh, is uh, nothing uh, uh, serious about that. And uh, so minimization condition also does not involve them, lambda one, lambda six, and uh, all this stuff. So it's a kind of... So is there any reason to include this term? It's higher dimensional one, so it's... Um... Yeah, so no, no, for this, uh, you don't uh, get to see any effect. Uh, just uh, I uh, kept it of the order of 10%. So since uh, uh, all these things are all the, uh, of the order of 10%. And uh, so for the Higgs mixing, you don't see any effect. And uh, uh, so uh, nowhere, basically, you uh, do see. So you, you can uh, just uh, block these pieces without any, uh, without any effect. Because after all, lambda 1s, uh, is phi one phi one phi s phi s so it's a kind of oh, no no I, I'm talking about lambda one two s oh lambda one two s uh, no lambda one two s absolutely is uh, just a uh, where you know we kept lambda s to be point one we kept lambda one two s to be point one as well so it, it seems it doesn't no, play any a, role. No, no, it does not play any role because uh, it's yeah. a phi one, phi two, you know, because phi one has a wave, wave but phi two does not have a wave, so phi s does not get any wave. So lambda one, two s does not do anything. Yeah, and also it's not renormalizable re term. Yeah. So, yeah. I, so that's why I'm just wondering why you're well, including oh, so, no, no. <laughs> You can uh, just uh, throw it out. So it's not doing anything, but uh, just uh, I kept it, uh, you know, so it's a dark parameter. I guess, I guess there is a probably typo. You probably missed the plus sign in the bracket of lambda one to S term. Yeah, probably you're right. When I was uh, looking at that, I was, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. the. I mean, apparently it looks like a dimension eight operator. But oh yeah, I see. Okay, that should be plus. The, in the middle, plus. there should be plus. So that uh, they, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no. Here yeah. there is a uh, yeah. plus. <laughs> yeah, right, right, <laughs> right. right. I actually, that's I right, wondered why, why there is a. Uh, yeah, there should yeah. be a plus sign here, right? I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it's irrelevant for any purpose here because it's a. Uh, phi s, uh, phi 2 does not get a wave. If phi 2 gets a wave, then phi s wave would be determined and all this stuff. So, but for this purpose, it's a... Yeah, yeah. I see. Thank you. Very good. Mm. Yeah, so my, actually I would not need uh, much of this Higgs sector other than this. So basically what I will need, you will see that these uh, mixing angles, which are functions of this uh, lambda, uh, you know, lambda one, lambda six, m two, lambda plus three, four, five, and uh, but lambda one two is actually appears here. Now I uh, see. Ah, no, this is m one two s. This is not lambda one two s. This is m one two s, right? M one two s is not uh, m one two s. Already we have defined it. Uh, yeah, this is the quantity. Yeah, m one two s is uh, uh, kind of important, but lambda one, not lambda one two s. Okay. Any other question? Uh, thanks. Look. Okay. Should I continue? Yes, I think you can go on. Okay. Go ahead. okay. So now we, we just uh, came to this uh, um, Ukoa coupling sector. And you can see that uh, again, the general, it's a uh, 
type three model. So uh, phi one uh, couples to everything, phi two couples to everything, and then phi s couples to this uh, sterile neutrinos, and then this m i j is your and this uh, uh, or sterile or right-handed or whatever you call it uh, that uh, mass matrix. So then uh, uh, what uh, we do we uh, go to the physical basis that means diagonalize this y1 uh, couplings and use these diagonalizing matrices to extract your CKM, PMNS matrices and then um, I use this diagonalization to write this Y2 coupling. And when you do that, you can see that uh, Y2 or uh, this uh, YSN, and these are uh, not uh, diagonal a priori. So that means uh, uh, those, are, uh, those have flavor violating components and, uh, uh, and actually will utilize those flavor violating components uh, to address some of these flavor violations. So basically, uh, when you uh, write down these uh, yeah, eukawa couplings, uh, between, uh, you know, for the charge leptons or quarks with very or various scalars, as uh, like a, uh, a heavy, heavy Higgs, light Higgs, or the standard model Higgs, and then also pseudo-scalars. So you can see uh, you have this diagonal mass piece and then of diagonal uh, Y2 couplings. Similarly, you can have these uh, couplings between active and sterile neutrino with scalars, and uh, because they would be associated with uh, this, uh, 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 these kinds of terms, uh, N, phi, and then L. So you can uh, active and sterile would uh, connect. And uh, then again, you have this uh, uh, direct term, diagonal terms, and then you have all the of diagonal terms which will be coming. And then of course, you, you also have a sterile neutrinos with a scalar coupling, uh, because uh, you have this kind of uh, terms. Uh, 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 and so uh, now, uh, since, uh, uh, phi s yes, mixes with everything, so you have this uh, uh, sterile. Uh, you have this uh, sterile neutrino coupling to everything H, H two, H one, and all these things. All these things, and similarly pseudo scalars. So that means uh, uh, now I have my full Yukawa coupling structure, and uh, between uh, sterile neutrinos and active neutrinos among the sterile neutrinos, and also. Uh, uh, for all the charge leptons and uh, quarks as well. So now once we have generated these coupling uh, matrices, I can do some, uh, I can do some uh, phenomenology yeah, using them. So the first one could be, uh, could be the neutrino sector, just uh, neutrino masses. It's a kind of a, uh, 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 trivial in this game because you have this M and uh, the sterile masses and the uh, Dirac neutrino masses and uh, Majorana mass and the uh, Dirac mass. And so when you combine them, you introduce this type one seesaw and at the end you get three light neutrino masses and uh, three heavy uh, sterile masses. So uh, for example, we can uh, choose this uh, uh, heavy light combination, uh, you know, like a, uh, lights are fixed like this, and then uh, uh, and then you can have uh, this uh, 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 or the Dirac and the Majorana masses are uh, uh, and uh, fixed uh, like this. Like Mi is your um, uh, uh, heavy uh, uh, neutrino masses, and which are kind of uh, varying from uh, uh, 2 kV. Uh, to 10 GV, 2 KV to 10 MeV, sorry. And uh, uh, similarly, uh, uh, yeah, so similarly, uh, another benchmark point is 7 uh, to 6 for the MeV. So, so uh, yeah, uh, to, uh, yeah. So, so you can see that uh, for, for the uh, light uh, uh, 
uh, uh, sterile neutrino is between 2 to 10 keV, and which could be interesting for your dark matter solutions. And uh, of course, your um, you're uh, using this uh, Dirac neutrino and this uh, uh, st sterile neutrino combination, you can fit the light neutrino masses at the uh, right eigenvalues. So, so now the question is, um, uh, the lightest, uh, so the dark matter would address by having this lightest neutrino to be, uh, to be the dark matter candidate. And uh, so uh, now the question is, uh, how do we address the uh, dark matter uh, in, in such a scenario, dark matter content in such a scenario? Uh, since, uh, you know, these are pr produced at a high temperature and they are never in thermal equilibrium due to their, uh, due to very weak interaction strength. So, uh, but even if you suppose manage to do it by producing late by some mechanism, but the question is, would they last long? So the, to make them to last long, compared to the age of the universe, you need, need to make their lifetime to be, lifetime into, for example, the lightest steri sterile into three neutrinos or lightest sterile to new gamma gamma to be uh, long enough. And how do you address that? You just make NH1 or this sterile sterile to lightest scalar to be of the order of zero, and this theta square. Theta square is sum of all the theta ij because any neutrino can be uh, can uh, through mixing produce this uh, sterile, and that uh, to obey this constraint. And uh, this uh, so you can see that uh, m n1 between two to 10 keV there, or 1 to 10 keV, that's our range. So we know what should be the theta square mass. So uh, for theta square, actually for those two benchmark points, we chose theta square actually satisfy this range. And for example, uh, benchmark one and benchmark two, theta squares uh, values are 10 to the power minus nine or 10 to the power minus 11. So now, uh, uh, in order to address the dark matter uh, uh, content, one can bring in this uh, non-resonant uh, dodelson woodrow mechanism, and uh, where these uh, steriles are produced from, this, uh, uh, from the mixing with the active neutrinos, and relic abundance is uh, given here. So theta square, we chose the theta square mixing in such a way as to, uh, to have the right uh, relic abundance. So you can see the relic abundance uh, can be of the, uh, of the correct size. And for larger, uh, a uh, little bit larger uh, uh, sterile mass, 7 keV order or 10 keV, if uh, Dodelson Woodrow uh, actually gets constrained from X ray, um, uh, all the X ray constraints, because theta square has to be smaller in those cases. And, uh, and here we chose theta square to, uh, to be 10 to a minus uh, 11 to pass that bound. And, but however, there is a resonant, uh, like a she uh, mechanism, which can uh, uh, produce it. But for that, actually, uh, we need some lepton asymmetry. We don't talk about that, but you can have CP violation. But uh, uh, if you get into this uh, uh, 7 keV uh, 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 sterile mass, then, uh, then uh, it's an interesting, uh, a case for the uh, Schiffler resonant uh, mechanism to produce it, and but in that case, uh, your delta L you need of the order of ten to the power minus three or so. So they, uh, that's the uh, uh, second case. Now seven keV also is interesting because uh, it can ex explain the the uh, the. Uh, 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 the uh, uh, anomalous 3.5 kV line in the X-ray spectrum uh, and in the XMM, Newton, Chandra, and uh, the, those uh, observations uh, for this uh, uh, galaxy clusters. Also in galaxy system, there was this uh, observation of 3.5 kV line. So, but I'm not getting into that, but it's possible to address that using this uh, uh, sterile part of this uh, story. Excuse me. Now, but, uh, since uh, we have a light scalar after all, and a light scale, so you know, like, a, uh, of course, you can uh, try to produce it in various other experiments, and 
you know, they, and you can detect it. And so since I mentioned that uh, light scalar needs to be connected to um, missing energy or the N1 pair, now you are familiar with N1. Uh, N1 is the light, lightest heavy neutrino, like we have, a, we have added three sterile neutrino and after diagonalization, that gives you the lightest heavy neutrino. And also H1 can decay into E plus E minus pair. So that means all the electron beam dump or NS64 could constrain it. And then also rare kion decay because since there is flavor violation, and then all, all the B decay experiments also can constrain it. But uh, suppose we make all these uh, uh, three uh, third generation related coupling to be zero. And of course, lepton flavor violating decays because uh, this is type three. So you are supposed to get all those constraints uh, from various, uh, various uh, flavor violating uh, processes. And uh, then super, uh, su uh, supernovae cooling, delta N effective, BBN. But for that, uh, so what we can do, we can keep the mass of the light scalar to be a little larger, like uh, about 10 MeV or so, or 20 MeV so, and then keep the couplings to be a little bit uh, higher uh, uh, for supernovae. And then we can uh, beat all these constraints. And actually, you will see when we try to address the anomalies, you need this light scalar to be a little bit uh, higher, like a, you know, like a less than 100, but heavier than 10 MeV or so. So now the future, the, where we can probe it, you'll see that uh, the NS64 mu, because it has mu coupling, G minus two will address, and then various neutrino experiments like Dune, SBND, Icarus can probe it, because this light scalar, Already, you know, you can see that it can couple to E plus E minus or photon and all these experiments have tremendous photon flux and through those photon flux you can produce them. So, so the, if there is a light scalar, there are many opportunities available in uh, uh, where you can really probe them. So now, the, now let's get into this uh, uh, model, uh, uh, this anomaly explanation. For G minus two right away, probably you can, you have started thinking like how we can do it. It's a, you know, like a just a, a Y E H one, two, two. So here it means mu mu H one light scalar and mu mu H one, this is a mu on loop and no flavor violation is needed and same coupling at both places and you can produce it and making the muon loop to give you the largest contribution. And this, uh, the, uh, this band, bluish band is G minus two favored and uh, this uh, parameter space is allowed right now but NS64 mu can really uh, kill it, this, uh, this future experiment, the, which is a uh, muon uh, beam dump. And then uh, 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 G, how about G minus two? As I said, G minus two would be a tricky one because G minus two, uh, you know, like a, uh, deviation is opposite to del, uh, the devi uh, deviation in the mu on case. And opposite means maybe you need, a, uh, you need to have a d different sign and uh, uh, that part is, uh, so you cannot have the same coupling in both ends. So you have one, one, three coupling, the other one is a three, one coupling. And you can do many other combination, but this is one combination. So electron, electron, and then you, you have a tau, and then E tau is uh, going through uh, and producing uh, and getting mixed through this. And this is the light scalar again. And, uh, and uh, but once you introduce the flavor violating coupling, you introduce flavor violation, tau to E gamma, tau to mu gamma, and all these processes. So you have to make sure that they are under, under control. So, and this is the parameter space uh, constraint for typical EH11 uh, uh, one, one coupling. Suppose you have a, you know, like a uh, one one uh, uh, part and then uh, the MH uh, light Higgs uh, mass is in this range. And uh, then you have all these uh, 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 E137 or say E41, 41. These are all electron beam dump type of experiment. And uh, then also in a 64 E, there is this constraint and in a 64 E future. So what we do, we choose E, e part to be 10 to the power minus five to address this, uh, 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 address this parameter space. 
And then for off diagonal, we choose in such a way so that this flavor violating coupling is, uh, uh, is satisfied. And this EE actually also would show up because uh, it would be useful for your mini boon excess also, uh, uh, also uh, you will uh, uh, see it in the Koto anomaly, it would show up. So now for the Koto anomaly, actually uh, what happens, uh, uh, you know, as I said, it's a KL0 to pi 0 nu nu, um, uh, or K plus to pi plus, uh, this is, these are the st standard model uh, prediction and KL0 to pi 0 nu nu is being measured at Koto. And Koto a 2018 result gives you like a three times 10 to the power minus nine, but the 2019 may gives you like about 2.1 and with plus minus uh, values. And uh, uh, so you can see that standard model prediction, as I said, is of the order of 10 to the power minus 11, but, uh, uh, but the experiment is now finding of the order of 10 to the power mi minus nine, and there is an interesting uh, situation. So if you say that you are just changing this pi zero nu nu, pi plus nu nu, then there is also a constraint from NA62. NA62 did not see anything uh, k plus two pi plus nu nu bar. And there the constraint is less than 10 to the power minus 10. And k plus two pi plus nu nu and pi kl zero pi zero nu nu, they are correlated by this Grossman mean. Uh, bound. So that means um, the, the, uh, you observe this, but this is breaking this bound because after all, pi plus nu nu is not, uh, there is no new physics signal uh, for at N62. So now the question is how one can address it. Now in the context of this light scalar, you need, as I said, you need KL to pi zero. So that means you need uh, DS or uh, or this flavor violating uh, one two coupling. So, and that could be dangerous because KLKS mass difference needs to be addressed. So, but this H1 uh, decays into a uh, N, because already we said that H1 decays into this N1 pair. So, in principle, so you have this KL0 pi 0 uh, N1 N1, and N1 N1 is missing. And uh, so, so that means. Uh, 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 it would mimic the KL0 to pi 0 new new signal. So that means uh, you, using this new H1 decay mode, you can satisfy this Koto uh, uh, anomaly, but uh, then also you bring in some additional E plus E minus, which you said that you may need for mini boon, all, or your, uh, or your uh, uh, G minus two of the electron where you, it shows up. And then it can introduce some K plus to pi plus H plus uh, uh, branching ratio. So altogether, it looks, this parameter space looks like this. So the, here you have this uh, constraint from uh, Koto 18, and uh, which is uh, shown here. And uh, this, uh, uh, and uh, this Koto favor is uh, shown by this, uh, uh, the, this uh, blue line. And then uh, you, you also have this uh, NA60, uh, NA62 and E949, both of them measure this uh, uh, K2 pi plus uh, 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 modes and as a KL0 to pi 0 E plus E minus or, uh, uh, or uh, sorry, it, they measure this K plus to pi plus minus E plus E minus and KL0 to pi 0 E plus E minus is being measured at KTEV. So KTEV is uh, this line. NA62 E949 is a K plus minus to pi plus minus E plus minus. And uh, similarly, LSND is also your, uh, uh, your E plus minus uh, uh, a final state. So, so, uh, so th uh, th uh, that means uh, uh, LSND, KTEV, 949, NS62, all of them are sensitive to this K uh, Koto parameter space, but strangely, 
all of them are kind of given uh, are keeping some region uh, to be empty as of now and so uh, because in 62 in uh, e949 both of them are kind of uh, sensitive excepting in this uh, uh, pion mass plus minus 25 uh, mev region so this region is uh, uh, kind of uh, still uh, open and uh, so, uh, you know, Smart like Koto, uh, uh, of course, is probing. So uh, eventually, would uh, see more results coming from Koto, and to see uh, you know, whether these four events are backgrounds or stay anomalous events. But uh, that's the status at this point. Professor, sure. Uh, uh, I didn't. I didn't get why. Why there is this gap between? Oh, that's the experimental sensitivity. Okay. So the, the NA60, NA62 E949, that's the experimental sensitivity. So we can, we just uh, cannot help there. Just that, uh, uh, the, 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 you know, the, uh, the yeah, pi on plus minus uh, that, you know, like uh, 25 MeV, uh, they are not sensitive. Mm -hmm. Do, do you believe, uh, j just one more question, do you believe sure. that uh, uh, leptonic, uh, K on leptonic decays, pure leptonic decays into invisibles, like uh, K plus to me plus invisibles, and where this light uh, scalar could play, would play the role as invisible, could uh, put important bounds in this parameter space? K plus to pi plus, of no, course. Uh, leptonic, K, K plus to me plus invisible. K plus to me mu plus H1. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's one, one measurement to, to this process, uh, which in general is applied when, we, when you have like vector playing the role as, as invisible, but so, so what's your final state? I just missed it. K plus two. So mian, mian. Okay, oh, plus two mu e plus e minus in age one. And now age one. K plus two to mian in age one. Okay. Uh, in one. a parse neutrino, right? Uh. Mm. So there is a. You are saying that uh, there is a constraint there. I, I actually, yeah, the, the, there is a measurement to this process, but, uh, but the, yeah, I would uh, ask if it would uh, be important to, to your case. And so see here we are using this, uh, yeah, so, so maybe uh, right away you can see it. So uh, the coupling, what we are using is DSH1, yeah. flavor violating DS to H1, and then H1, to E plus E minus and H1 to NN. Uh -huh. So that means a flavor violating piece to produce K2 pi because K2 pi needs this D, D2S so that you can produce this K2 pi and then H decays into uh, nu nu and uh, H decays to E plus E minus. I see. I understand. So if you find any other bound, please let me know because I'm uh, searching for some more bounds. So some of these bounds were not, for, for example, LSND was not uh, easy to track, but uh, anyway, so we found at the end how the, it's a S brim strolling from proton. So uh, this light scalar brim strolling from proton and proton has some strange content. So using that, I got the LSND bound. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, uh, yeah, KTAV is straightforward. And then uh, KOTO, of course, and E949 NA62 available. And uh, I could not find anything else in this parameter space. But if okay. you find, please let me know. I'll be eager. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Very good. So now for the mini boon, uh, 
uh, that's an interesting one because uh, the the result is kind of you can see this is a uh, 2018 and there is a 2020 paper and which i showed 638 is from there and 2018 the uh, excess was 4.7 now it's 4.8 it's a minuscule increase but still they had uh, they analyzed more data and mini boon they had more neutrino flux and anti neutrino flux and this is the distribution so you can see that in the neutrino anti neutrino where you see this electron like uh, event excess it, the it's uh, uh, it's in the forward direction but not too forward and this is the visible energy distribution for neutrino and anti neutrino so now you may say that, uh, you know, what could be a way to explain this uh, excess? And already there is a, uh, there are quite a few works based on uh, this idea. The idea is neutrino gets converted into a sterile or a heavy sterile, and then it uh, goes back to neutrino and emitting this Z prime. And then Z prime talks to the uh, nucleus via this photon exchange. So this is a dark Z prime model and to fit the data, that means the angular spectra is forward, not too forward. And then the energy distribution given here, uh, what this group and few other group they did, they use this new uh, sterile mass to be around three, 400, uh, three to 400 MeV. And this uh, ZD is less than dark Z is less than 60 MeV, actually 30 or 40 MeV they have chosen. So uh, due to this, what happened? Due to these choices, E plus E minus is collimated like a small Z prime mass and it looks like an electron-like event. And Miniboon uses Cherenkov light for detection. So that means the E plus E minus, though these two are produced, but uh, they are kind of, uh, their showers are overlapping. And so, yeah, uh, you know, it looks like a electron like even. So that, that's the idea behind this explanation. And so, uh, but we don't have this dark Z in our model, but instead we have a dark scalar or the H1 light scalar, whatever you call it. Then you may say that, oh, so that's a simple extension. But this extension also has a value. We'll see that. So first of all, that's, uh, you know, the, uh, let's settle the score uh, here. As again, new two or this muon type comes in, goes, gets, in, go, gets into N2 via this light scalar. Light scalar talks to the nucleus. And then N2 decays into N1 and the light scalar. Light scalar decays to E plus E minus. And then you, you can calculate the event rate uh, from the scatter, scattering cross section. And they here, FP, Fn, that depends on this uh, light scalar coupling to quarks. And it can couple to up quark or down quark. So that means we need this coupling, nu2, n2, h1, and hq, h1, q, q. And uh, here, of course, this, n, uh, this, is, hundred, uh, this is n2 is on, you know, on mass shell and then N2 decays to N1 and H1, everything is on mass shell. So, uh, you know, these are branching ratios, but here you need the coupling. So that's the idea. And H plus, of course, it goes to E plus E minus 5% because that's what we uh, have uh, so far assumed. Now, uh, uh, now the question is, uh, uh, what's the special uh, trick the scalar does? Now, if you look at the uh, scalar cross section as a function of E nu, you see that it's a falling cross section. But for the gauge boson, a transverse degrees of freedom, you will see the cross section is a rising cross section. And that makes a difference because uh, if you suppose want to check mini boon, which people are, like uh, for example, the, you, you can use the Minerva data or the charm data, but both Minerva and charm, they are at higher energy. And so at higher energy, the scalar mediated cross section falls, but the gauge mediated cross section rises. So if you have a gauge model, if you try to explain mini boon, probably you are already ruled out by charm two or the Minerva data or even T2K. But if you are, uh, if you are at this uh, scalar mediated, then you can see the scalar cross section falls and falls rapidly. So if the ENU, if the, your energy is uh, 
you know, 5, 10 or 15, 20, like a Minerva charm range, then right away you see that the, you are hitting a falling uh, cross section. And mini boon needs uh, only this part. So, you know, here does not matter. Here you fit the data, but your prediction for all these other exp existing results are, um, you know, quite small. So the, the question is, uh, uh, then uh, you satisfy all the co uh, constraint, but uh, then what's the allowed parameter space? So again, just to say you fit this uh, uh, new mu uh, N2 H1 coupling and, you, and the coax side, and then you get a band. And you can see that uh, this is the allowed band H1 goes from, uh, for, you know, like a, uh, you know, it can be even smaller, it can be larger, but uh, you, you know, this light scalar can fit it. Oh, so, so, so far we found that the light scalar is constrained by the koto to be in a given range, otherwise in a 62 was chasing it out. And electron and G minus two, they are fine, they are fine with a hundred MeV or so, like uh, around that uh, value. And, but only koto gives you a uh, uh, pinpoint some range. So now combining everything, we can see that uh, light scalar 130, 140, 150 MeV can explain all these uh, constraints, G minus two of the electron. This, uh, you can see all the couplings are of the order of 10 to the power minus four levels, uh, satisfies G minus two. And uh, because after all, deviation is of the same order. And then for Koto, it's a flavor violation. Of course, flavor violating coupling would be much smaller than the flavor diagonal one. So it's kind of on the smaller side. And for mini boon, everything again is kind of a, you know, 10 to the power minus five to minus six level. So G minus two mini boon, they are not too distant off from each other in terms of the magnitude. And Koto is a flavor violation. So it, you need a smaller coupling. And then combining everything, you can explain relic abundance. Of course, the neutrino masses and mixing, delta A mu, delta A e, and then the uh, then of course the koto and uh, ten to the power minus nine level and uh, this e plus e minus and all this uh, are ten to the power minus eleven level. But whatever it is, in a sixty two, uh, since it's not in that re regime, so in a sixty two still allows it. So uh, let me. Uh, come to a, a conclusion. So uh, I addressed quite a few puzzles and uh, anomalies in the context of this model. And I tried to do that uh, using a scale because I thought that the, uh, of course you can uh, try to, uh, uh, you know, address all the anomalies by these uh, couplings and all this stuff. But it seems uh, not, not only the couplings, but there are, a scale seems to be kind of uh, helping all these uh, all these anomalies to be addressed, and uh, then uh, dark matter neutrino masses uh, they can be fit, and uh, you know modification of course so one can build a uh, 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 you know a UV com uh, complete model to address this uh, extended Higgs sector, and uh, then uh, light scalar emerging from this uh, at least that scale is interesting. And they, uh, as I mentioned, they, uh, uh, you know, they can be probed in the upcoming G minus two uh, measurements, Koto measurements in a 64 mu, then micro boon, dune, SBND, Ikara. So there are many, many places where you can probe these things. But this interestingly, uh, the, uh, you know, LHC uh, does not have much of a reach for this uh, light scalar, but it seems uh, all these low energy experiments via these photon fluxes can, uh, can really uh, probe this light scalar in a very effective way. Thank you for paying attention. Thank you very much. Uh, so if you have a question, then turn on your mic and uh, video. So, question? So, I have a, a couple of questions. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The, first of all, when you talk about the uh, muon G minus 2 and the electron G minus 2, uh, you mentioned the tau to mu gamma and the tau to e gamma, but not mu to e gamma. 
Yeah, yeah. so actually w- there is nothing which is giving you mu to e gamma mm. unless you do this uh, uh, it's much more suppressed. No, actually in our paper you will see that we also put the mu to e gamma. Okay. But okay. Uh, here uh, the you know it's easily satisfied. So let me mm. go back there and then uh, tell you why. So see we need tau e and e tau coupling. Mm-hmm. And nothing to do with mu. Ah, okay. That's why. Yeah. So, but you may say that uh, you know, like, uh, would not gym, uh, you know, this uh, some of these, uh, you know, ten to the minus four can go down if you in- introduce little bit of a uh, tau mu coupling. You can do that, uh, and uh, but that would introduce mu e gamma because tau mu tau e mixed together. But that's very small. In the beginning, we we thought that. Uh, uh, mu e gamma would be produced somehow but then we found that uh, oh no you can avoid it but anyway mu e gamma can uh, can arise but uh, only at uh, you know unless it, you can prevent it so that's mm-hmm. the way it. Okay. you can prevent it uh, second question is that uh, probably you explained what i may have missed yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could you show the uh, neutrino scattering cross section uh, sure. as an energy function of energy for mini boon, yeah. So you said the scalar and the vector shows a different behavior at, as energy increases. Right. So w- what's the reason for that? Oh, this is scalar is a, but, but vector has this transverse mode, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, when you just use this transverse uh, polarization, mm. you just uh, pick pick up that uh, co- uh, constant cross section piece or saturation cross cross section mm-hmm. because you have this uh, or uh, you know like a, a longitudinal piece is purely uh, uh, just the q square plus uh, mm-hmm. image one square, but this one you have the q square on the top and. Mm. So, uh, yeah, like in you, in a energy dependent piece because your polarization would pick that up. Mm. So if, if that's a property of any in any gauge uh, uh, mediated cross section because of the transverse polarization. Mm-hmm. So this is scattering is a uh, uh, neutrino and the nucleon scattering cross section. Right. Sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the, the the picture is this. Mm-hmm. So it's a straightforward, yeah. Uh, neutrino. Okay. So it was not uh, appreciated uh, actually. After uh, when we are about to finish this paper, we found that there was another paper who also noticed this thing. This uh, I uh, give the reference. Mm-hmm. It, uh, just this year right before our paper uh-huh. <coughs> the date but it's a 2020 right before our paper so they also realized the same thing that uh, uh, you know it's a uh, uh, you know it, it was known before but uh, just uh, light scalar in the context of light higgs when uh, or light scalar did not uh, it was not expressed so this applies to only to the uh, light scalar or light vector case yeah yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, so, any other question? Excuse me. Hello? I have a question. Sure. Hello. Um. So, could you go to the next slide? I think it's next slide. And this one. Um, the next slide. Uh, this no. one. Ah, uh, maybe next. That uh, second last slide. I. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, maybe this one. Um, so you're using the KV, the lightest right hand neutrino is a KV. And are you supposed the uh, is it supposed to be dark matter? Yeah, so actually that's the thing I argued. So uh, and uh, what I did so, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. so actually there are too many uh, moving parts in this model. So uh, what I did, I mm-hmm. arranged it 1 to 10 keV 
And if you mm -hmm. come from the sterile neutrino dark matter end, that's an interesting region. So why? Because uh, this is the region where it ex uh, kind of bypasses all the extra constraints. There are some regions where it ca can be successful dark matter. And uh, one way would be dodelson withdraw mechanism, non-resonant. And uh, the other one could be she fuller And uh, I... Uh, you know, I kept 7K AV because if, uh, suppose you, you are interested to address this uh, anomalous uh, X-ray, anomalous line in the X-ray spectra as observed in the XMM Newton. So that's why I kept the 7K AV. But the 7K AV, the price is, uh, uh, you know, it needs to go through this uh, resonant Schieffuller mechanism, which, which is okay, but you need to bring in this uh, CPI symmetry. Yeah, but uh, yeah, what I'm wondering is that 7kV is almost excluded, or, or, or uh, I suppose it's already excluded by uh, uh, Lyman alpha or you know small scale structure formation. Yeah, so the, your theta square. I I just kept the theta square to be too small. No, 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 no. It's mass. It's oh, it's purely mass. Oh, ah. So you are saying yeah. uh, uh, like a, a, a sterile neutrino dark matter uh, Lyman alpha. Yeah. Uh, right. So, so what's the range which is still allowed since it's in... I think it's 7 kV is already excluded. Okay. And, so the, but the 2 uh, kV is still KV okay. Is. So so that means you are saying that uh, that constraint is uh, this excess but uh, this anomalous line is also then ruled out because uh, why we kept 7 kV because they you know like uh, all these sterile neutrino people they say that they can explain this uh, uh, anomalous uh, line in the X-ray spectra. So that's why we kept 7KV. We, we are not yeah. a fan of 7KV. Yeah, and a few years ago, yes, but uh, recently... But uh, now you're yeah. saying that 7 uh, but, so, so, yeah. so could you please send me and uh, uh, send me the reference, then I can uh, add it in our future. Oh, yes. But 2KV is okay, right? Uh, sorry? 2KV is okay. 2 to 3 kV no, 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 is still okay. No, less than, it, you know, any values less than about 10 kV is excluded. It's too warm. Oh, Otherwise, really? yeah, oh. unless we have, it, unless we have, a, you know, some non-trivial mechanism to, um, you know, to, to make the small scale structure formation successful. Oh, that, oh, that one, then I have a problem because some of these people in the, uh, uh, Hello simulation, they claim that uh, one dark matter is still okay. One kV is actually too warm. It's, yeah. um, it smears out all of the uh, small scale structure. In but uh, no. don't they kind of see less number of uh, structures? Because that's the um, uh, uh, that's the problem, and that's why people started uh, thinking that the sterile neutrino is much better fit. Uh, used to be, but I guess not now. Okay, so because why I'm <laughs> always worried because for those uh, simulation mm -hmm. when they include baryon or not baryon, and then top of that they have they included sterile neutrino, and so uh, I I have not yet seen any simulation which includes everything baryons and sterile neutrino and then say that sterile neutrino is ruled out right. so that's my only uh, because i i'm not uh, in that uh, hello simulation business uh, but uh, just i uh, pick up what i hear mm -hmm. and there i think uh, but again, um, I, I took this number from, from a Boyarsky paper. So I was going through this in our, when we were writing this paper, we took it from Boyarsky paper. And, but maybe you, you may say that people are biased. It's possible people are biased. But uh, uh, also I could not find any place where people, uh, you know, this range is ruled out. So that's why I say like, if you have a reference, that would be in, uh, very good for me because I'm also looking for something. Yeah, if you can make it a little bit heavier, like 10 kV or heavier, uh, it, it'll be fine. But okay. uh, that, is it is it still working for mini boom? Like yeah, because uh, the all uh, so uh, see mini boom ra range is GeV. Yeah, mm -hmm. because neutrino energy is GeV. 
Yes. And yes. so, uh, so it's not a problem for mini moon. So the mm -hmm. mini moon does not face that problem. See, in neutrino energy is GeV. It has yeah. enough energy. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, all you are uh, saying that N1 is KeV or not. Look at N2. N2 mass is about 300 MeV or 100, mm -hmm. greater than 100 MeV. Mm -hmm. H1 is of the order of 100 MeV or 50 mm -hmm. to 100. So mm -hmm. e, e, whether it's 10 KeV or 7 KeV, it does not matter. We chose 10 KeV, 2 KeV because, you know, I was doing this uh, uh, Dodelson Woodrow or Shea Fuller and all this stuff. But if you want uh, to make it to 10 kV, that would be great be because that's why I was looking for that. But that scale is too mm -hmm. tiny for this uh, uh, experiment. Mm -hmm. And I for see. Koto also, you can see that, uh, you know, there is nothing which uh, prevents it from 10 kV or uh, uh, 10 kV from 7 kV or 2 kV. Yeah. And now I start wondering if this if uh, H1 coupling to N1 induce some additional decay channel for N1. N1 is lighter. H1 is a uh, no, no, so, so the loop. But uh, still N1 is the light. So yeah, yeah. N1 decay there are other decay modes uh, for sure. And actually H1 we, also well, uh, uh, for instance, H1 decays into two photons. Right. Uh, the, the, right. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. So actually, I... Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. So N1 goes to new plus a two photon. There, right. So we need, needed to make sure that uh, N1 lifetime uh, using those H1 decay mode. Right. Uh, absolutely. Maybe uh, there's a tree level decay channel. Three, H1 is heavier. Yeah, 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 but uh, uh, off shell. Like, well, yeah, yeah uh, suppose N1 mixed with a uh, uh, left handed neutrino, right? right. Uh, so N1 has a coupling to H1 and N2, and this N2 goes to uh, mix with a uh, standard model neutrino. Yeah, that, that's what is happening. And, the, and H1, H1 gives gamma, a two. Yeah, yes. This is that diagram. Oh, that is the decide. Yeah, I yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. I see. So, so the, this is precisely what's happening. N1 mixes mm -hmm. to standard model neutrino, as you said. H mm -hmm. star is produced. H star decays to two photon. So we needed to make this lifetime to be smaller. So that's why, you know, mm -hmm. all these uh, 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 constraints. It is the constraint on a, a, why NH112, one, one, right? Yeah, yeah, but theta square. So, uh, you oh, know, okay. Okay. theta square uh, is I the see. mixing between all these things. Uh, okay, I mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. I see. This theta okay. square mixing comes from there. No, no, actually, the, that sector was uh, kind of, we kind of spent a good amount of time to make sure that N1 mm -hmm. has long lifetime. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Also, N2, 3 new, and all this stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. Uh, okay, uh, any other questions? Question or comments? Uh, I think, uh, if not, then let's then speak out there. Uh, thank you very much for very nice talk. Thank you. Thank you.